Hello, Jocelyn Mozak here with Mozak Design. Um, I want to share with you today how I leverage WP Engine and seed sites, basically sort of bare bones sites that have all of the themes, plugins, and anything else I might want to speed up and optimize my development process. So right now you can see inside of my WP Engine site, I have three uh, seed sites that I use. And the only difference between them is the theme installed. I have Beaver Builder, Divi, and Elementor. These are the ones I'm typically moving within. I can certainly leverage any of these if there's for some reason some other theme I might be using, but I don't remember the last time I used another one. So each of these, if we were to look at them and log into one, for example, let's grab Beaver Builder as a for example. If I go ahead and I go into this site, and log in. You can see it's the default. There's nothing fancy here. Uh, nothing special has been set up. But what I do have back here, for example, is my plugins. So these are kind of my go-to plugins. They change sometimes, but this is kind of reflective of the plugins we're using right now. Most of them are off. The only ones that are on are the ones that support the theme I'm using classic editor because, well, right now I'm not so sure I want to use Gutenberg. Um, this is uh, basically uh, Manage WP, which I use to manage my sites. That may very well be another uh, video for how to save yourself time leveraging tools, but that is the utility I use. And these are just other things like Gravity Forms or Responsive Menu. Um, all my sites get the video user manual. Um, as kind of a bonus, although frankly, I don't know how my clients actually use it. Um, I have some update upgrades like the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder that as I need, I will activate um, WP Rocket, Yoast. These are all things that as the project progresses in our checklist and based on needs, we'll turn on plugins as needed. And then at launch, whatever ones are not activated, we go and we remove. And any ones that we found that we needed to add, that's where we look at them and on a case-by-case -case basis and say, is this a plugin that is now becoming part of our process? And if so, it needs to go in the documentation of our you know, standard plugins and add it to our seed sites. Again, super easy to do leveraging um, Manage WP. I keep all of these seed sites up to date along with all my maintenance clients. Under appearances, I have things set up nice and clean. I have Beaver Builder, the core theme. I have a child theme should I need it. And then I just keep one other kind of default WordPress theme. Otherwise, I keep this folder nice and clean. So closing this, if and when I am ready to create a new site, what I will do is as follows. So as a developer, WP Engine gives us a complimentary um, development account where we can have as many transfer sites as we want. Um, this may be true for any site within them, but I do know that as a developer, I applied and I actually have one complimentary live site on WP Engine because I do refer to them because they are my, my host of choice. So when I'm ready to have a new client, let's say I have a new client, I'm going to add a site. And the site name is going to be something like, um, and I need to make it unique, so I'm trying to come up with something clever that doesn't take anything too good. Um, let's do new MD client. Okay. I'm going to copy this so I have it in memory. And instead of putting it in my seed area, I'm going to put it in development. So I've kind of got some structure here. I have seed sites development sites, my own live sites, and just things that I'm archiving. Maybe I don't want to delete them, but I don't want them kind of cluttering up my active area. So I'm going to put this in development, and it's going to be a transferable site. Uh, for my account, I'm only allowed one live site. It doesn't matter. This is development. And transferable is beautiful. You can easily use a code and switch it over to your client's um, WP Engine account when you're ready. Or if WP Engine is not the final host, you move it as you would typically move a site. So I'm going to go ahead and add the site, and I will give it a moment. And I'm going to use it, instead of a brand new site, I'm going to copy from existing. So I'm going to also go ahead and just name it this. And I'm going to copy it from, uh, let's say it's a Beaver Builder site. So I'm going to grab Beaver Builder. If it was Elementor, I'd grab Elementor and Divi, Divi. So it's a Beaver Builder site. 
um, and it's going to create the environment, basically making a clone of my staging area. So when I log into this new MD site, it's going to have all my plugins, all my theme, everything ready to go per how we are doing things. Now, while it sets this up, I'm going to do some stuff. For one thing, I like to have consistency, and they always set it up with demo and then a password. And so to make my life simple, I go and change the password, and hopefully it will keep this as it sets it up. I'm going to change the password to be my new client. So this way, this is a nice kind of system and process where it's not a guest to my developer or anyone on the team what the password's going to look like. It's always demo and then essentially our development link name. Additionally, I like to set up SFTP users while I'm in here just in case we need it. So I'm going to add a user. And again, I always follow the same naming convention, Mosaic Design. The password, I will go ahead and let it pick one, which I'm going to copy so I can save. And then the environment is going to be production. So I'm going to go ahead and add that user. And then I'm going to go over to my login document, and I'm going to add that password. And I'm going to ensure I have the user. And I actually want to add one more thing, which is the SFTP address and the port. Just for making simple cut and paste when needed. So the last thing we need to do is wait till the development area is finished setting up. Once it is, we can log into our WordPress admin area using the password that we know is valid from the staging seed site. And once we log in, we're going to change it to something unique for this development site. And we'll come over to our document and put it in here. And this way, we have a master of the development area, what all the usernames and logins are. We can also append to this site the live information for the site for the client going forward once we know who their final host is and what the logins are going to be for that host. So now that we come back over here and we can see that the message is gone, we know we can log in. We'll simply use demo and again, cut paste. Looks like it's not completely done setting up, even though the message went away. Ah, there we go. And first thing I'll do is come over to my profile, generate password, copy the password, update the profile, come to my documents, and save the password. And so now my developer and my team has everything they need to go and execute this. And likewise, if I need to log in, if this is all, this is typically not set up by myself, it's set up by my team. So if I never ever need to have access to any of this stuff, I immediately know where to find it. Uh, after this, just to give you some additional insight as to my process, it does continue on. Um, my uh, friend and developer then adds them to Orion, or Managed WP, which is where we keep all of our clients, where we can keep their software up to date, backed up, do things like performance scans, uh, have malware scans, just generally where we keep our sites to ensure the health of the site. Uh, but this hopefully should give you a quick um, getting started overview on how I use WP Engine to effectively have seed sites and then so as a result very quickly, very consistently setting up development areas for new builds in my agency so we have a consistent starting point and as a result a consistent process. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find me at mozakdesign.com or email at me at jocelyn at mozakdesign.com. Find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter, find me pretty much anywhere on the web. Um, I always love to connect, help, and support others as they really do these type of things in their business so they can love their business and do the fun stuff as opposed to some of this tedious stuff and really help them to up-level the quality of their business as they step in from being, you know, a freelancer who's kind of just doing this to feeling like a professional business that has all of these systems and processes in place. Uh, there is going to be a supplemental document that goes alongside this with screenshots showcasing the different things that I showed along the way in this video. 
and you can feel free to download it, save it to your own Google Doc, whatever works for you, and that maybe is your very first system and process in your business, and if so, I congratulate you for taking the first step. Have an amazing day. Bye.